What's cooking in Isville? Hi guys, I'm Chef Ray, and I have the pleasure of cooking with you guys today. So, today we're gonna make vegetable frittata with arugula salad. So, first things first, let's get out our menu board and let's go through our ingredients. So, first thing on the list is shallots. So, with doing these videos, I'm hoping to introduce you guys to some new vegetables and some new ingredients that you can use at home. So, this is a shallot. All it is is a small onion. It's kind of a cross between say a red onion and a garlic. It has a very uh, mild onion taste, but also has a little bit of a garlic taste. So I really, really love cooking with these. So they're called shallots or shallots, however you want to pronounce it, but check it out. So uh, I got this one at Sobe, so they got them there. So go ahead and grab some of those. Okay, next, cremini mushrooms. So I love cremini mushrooms. The reason why I love cremini mushrooms is they're a little bit more pungent in taste, so they're very much like a small portobello mushroom, which is really, really nice. So you can find these at the grocery store. They kind of look like white button mushrooms, but they have a darker top. Okay, cremini mushrooms, awesome. Next, red peppers. So I love using shepherd peppers. So these are just the longer version of, of red peppers. I find these to be a little bit more sweeter, so I really, really love these. I recommend them for sure. And then we have our basic frittata ingredients. So we have eggs. We love getting our local eggs here. There's one right down the street from the town of Innisfil. So make sure you support your local farmers and get some local eggs. Uh, we have milk, a little bit of cheese, our salt and pepper, and we have our fresh thyme. So I'm really excited for you guys to use fresh herbs. A lot of people don't use it, they're scared of it. Um, I know it goes bad pretty quickly, but the benefit of the flavor is way, way better than any dry ingredient. So we're going to use fresh thyme today. So hopefully you guys grabbed it. Again, I just found this at Sobeys, very cheap. So I'm excited to use these today and I want you guys to really, really start using fresh herbs, okay? Parsley, basil, thyme, even fresh oregano, uh, chives are really good. So really try and start using fresh herbs, okay? And then last but not least, we have our salad ingredients. So we got a nice, beautiful local arugula again. So, but again, you can use any arugula. This is, uh, I really love arugula because it's really peppery and it's really strong in flavor, but we balance it out with our balsamic vinegar and a little bit of honey, which is sweet. And we're um, Innisfil Creek honey people here. So those are our guys. So again, I'll give you guys a few minutes to gather up your ingredients and then we'll start. It's important to have everything ready for you, all cleaned, all washed. It's going to make your life so much easier in the kitchen. This way, we have everything we need and we're ready to start. Okay, see you in the back. Okay guys, so we're ready to start. So first thing, really important, what's really going to help you in the kitchen is a really sharp chef's knife. So you start using dull knives, that's when accidents happen. You'll find the benefits. It, it's so much easier to cook, so much easier to cut, as long as you have a really, really sharp knife. Now, if you don't know how to sharpen a knife, maybe I can do a video soon about that. But for now, most people, what we have is a, uh, it's called a steel, and all you do is just run it across the steel, try to go away from you. Just this way, you don't wanna go this way. So just try to go away from you and get it really, really sharp. Okay, this is really gonna help you in the kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna try not to skip any steps here. We're gonna go right from the beginning. So first things first, we're gonna turn the oven on. This way when the frittata is ready to go, we're gonna finish it in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna set our oven to 350 and we'll have that preheat. By the time we finish doing everything here, it'll be ready to go and we can it. So when I choose a pot for cooking, I love to use pots that have steel handles. So the reason why I like that is it's really easy to go into the oven with it and you don't have to worry about the handles melting. Although most melt, most handles are pretty good nowadays. So you're safe to do that, especially this, this uh, dish only takes 10 to 15 minutes. So if you have a plastic handle, don't worry about it. But next time you go shopping for, uh, for pans, try to go steel handle, okay, or stainless steel. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to our pan here. We're gonna get that going. And we're gonna turn it to just medium heat for now, okay? Cause we're gonna be cutting everything up. So let's start with our shallot. Pretty simple, just cut the end off. Try to keep the end with the stem in it. That's gonna help keep it together, okay? We'll cut it down the middle. We'll peel off some of the skin here. 
and then we start. So we want to have everything kind of small diced, as small as you can. Remember when you're cutting, tuck your fingers in, we don't want to cut anything. Okay, so just go long ways along the shallot and then just the box. Super small. It's also important to have a, a little uh, bucket or a little bowl beside you just to keep all your scraps. Instead of keep going into the, the bin every 10 seconds to throw away your scraps, get a little bowl going and just have all your scraps there, okay? So let's do this other half here. I hope you guys enjoy these shallots. I really, really love them. I didn't use them much before I got into the kitchen, but once I got in there, they were all over the place. So shallots are the way to go. Okay, so we'll have that cut. And we'll just keep that to the side. I like to have everything on my cutting board ready to go. Now we'll start with the mushrooms. Just a simple slice. Remember to keep your fingers tucked in here. Beautiful. We'll just keep that off to the side and then we'll start with the pepper. So the way I like to do it is I like to cut one long strip down the side and just keep going around like that. This way it's much easier to cut the pepper. And then all you're left with is just the little end here. Okay. So that goes in a scrap bucket. And then I just like to do nice long strips first with the pepper. And if you're finding that your knife isn't the sharpest, another good trick is to actually cut the inside of the pepper facing up as opposed to the skin side facing up. It's a lot easier to cut it with um, the skin side down, so the flesh side up. Okay, super simple. What I love about frittatas is, you know, you can really use anything that's in your fridge. Anything left over, you can use um, any meats, any cheeses, really, any vegetables you have. So we'll get this all chopped up. We'll check on our heat. And as soon as this comes up to a nice you can feel the heat on your hand, it's ready to go. Okay, so let's get you guys to that step and then I'll meet you in a bit. We almost forgot our zucchini. So, here he is. Let's chop him up too. Zucchinis, I just like to cut the ends off first. And then I like to go long ways down the middle. And then just slice, little half moons. Everything on our cutting board and we're ready to rock. Our, our pan is nice and hot so we're just gonna move the olive oil around get it all nice and covered. If you have a non-stick pot perfect, if you don't that's okay. And then now we're just gonna actually pick up our cutting board and we're just gonna start pouring everything into this bowl. Now sure you could do things individually if you want but we're at home we're having fun just put everything in there. Terrific. Now an important thing to do when you're cooking is you want to season kind of as you go. So everything you add to this pan, you want to season as you go. So we have all our veggies in there. So let's start with our salt and pepper. Now a couple pinches there. And maybe just one pinch of black pepper. Okay, we'll get our wooden spoon and away we go. Now, I know we all love to flip, so let's practice it together. So you don't want to be too aggressive when you're flipping this pan. You just want a little pull. You're basically just pulling the pan towards you, and the curve of the pan is making it flip, okay? So just a simple little pull, and you're cooking like a chef in no time. Okay, so we're gonna get these nice and toasty. We're gonna wait till they're a little bit brown, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, so we got our vegetables sauteing, they're getting nice and brown, all the flavor is coming together nicely. So while we're waiting for that to brown up, let's prepare the frittata mix, so the egg mixture, okay? So we'll get a small bowl, and we'll start with our six eggs. 
Okay, and again, that um, the bowl of scraps is coming in handy. We're not making a million trips to the bin there. Everything goes in this one bin, and then we just dump it at the end. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Now, you notice that I'm not breaking the egg on the actual bowl. The reason why I'm not doing that is because a lot of times when you're cracking on the bowl, some of the shell will get inside. So I like to have just a little paper towel to the side, just smack it on the ground, and then just open it up into the bowl. This way I, I can see if anything's falling in. Okay, perfect, we got our six eggs. Okay, and like we said earlier, we want to season this as well. So everything that we do, we're seasoning. So a little bit of salt here, a little bit of pepper here. Okay, while we have time, let's move over and just give this a little shake. Now that we're all professional pullers, we can just pull the pan, do a nice little flip. Perfect, that looks great. So now we're gonna get the mixture going. We're just gonna get a fork. And we're gonna scramble these eggs. Now I like to add just a little bit of milk. So the milk will kind of loosen the eggs a little bit and get it nice and fluffy and uh, nice and smooth. That's why I like to add that. So let's get this going really nice. Now I love making frittatas because they're, they're quick, they're easy, they're healthy, they can feed a lot of people. Like I said earlier, they, they get rid of a lot of extra things that you got kicking around in the fridge. So it's a really, really beautiful, quick, it's great for lunch, great for dinner, you can eat it anytime. Okay, perfect, so we got that all nice and scrambled. Now we're going to add our cheese right into the bowl. So we'll get that right into there. Now again, we're using cheddar cheese today, but you can use any any cheese. You can use goat cheese for this, feta cheese, mozzarella cheese, Monterey, whatever you love. That goes in there. And now my favorite ingredient for this, and that I'm excited for you guys to use is your fresh thyme. So the cool thing about thyme is we're not even gonna cut it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple strands. So it just kinda looks like this. Just a couple strands from, uh, from the pack. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull it. We're just gonna pull it and the leaves are gonna come right off, okay? So you just pull it like that. That's nice and clean. And then you just pinch it in. And you can just smell all the beautiful flavors. Thyme is one of my favorites. This is great with chicken, it's great with potatoes, amazing with eggs. One of my favorite ingredients is thyme. So I just use about maybe two or three sprigs. Okay, we'll get that mixed up. We've seasoned it, our veggies are looking good, they're looking nice and brown. So look at that, the oven is ready, so we just heard the beep. So, we got everything cut, we got our egg mixture done, the oven is ready, so now it's time to make the frittata. So what you want to do is set up your pan, and you want to kind of just make all the vegetables nice and flat, a nice even layer, okay, a little bit of everything kind of spread out evenly. Okay, so we'll have that like that. And then we're gonna bring our mixture. And all we're gonna do is slowly pour the eggs all the way around. So start in the middle and just kind of work your way around, work your way around. Make sure you get to the edges, try to fill in any of the holes that you might have. Perfect. Awesome. Right into here. <laughs> And then like I said earlier, it's all ready to go. We can shut this off now. We're gonna take our pan, it's gonna go right in the oven, just like that. We'll set the timer for about 10 minutes. And what we wanna see is when we uh, shake the, give the frittata pan a little shake, it should be nice and firm. So there shouldn't be any runniness happening, okay? So hopefully everyone's caught up and we'll meet back and we'll pull it out. Okay guys, so our frittata is in the oven. We have about 10 minutes. So what I like to do in this time is number one, just clean my area. So all of the ingredients that we use for the frittata is all gone. Uh, all of the, the scraps are all put away. So this is gonna make your life in the kitchen so much easier. You gotta kinda clean as you go. So before we start the next thing, let's clear off all of the first dish. Everything's away, everything's kinda cleaned up. So now we can start with the second. 
okay? So this is gonna be super quick. So all we gotta do is add our arugula to our bowl. We don't wanna have too much, maybe we just have the box. So now we're gonna make a vinaigrette, but we're gonna make it right into the bowl. So if you're gonna make a vinaigrette at home and you want a big batch, you wanna to try to get the ratio of between three and four to one. So that means three parts or four parts oil to one part vinegar. Okay, and then I love to add a little touch of honey just to sweeten it up, just to give it that balance. If you want the, the vinaigrette to be a little thicker, you can add a little bit of mustard, so a little Dijon mustard. And when you're whisking it, it really thickens up that dressing, okay? So maybe we'll do another, uh, another show on salads and we'll I'll teach you how to do some nice fresh Caesar dressing, some fresh vinaigrettes, okay? But for now, we're gonna do it right in the bowl. So we're just gonna eyeball it, don't be afraid. So remember, we're in our mind, we're thinking, okay, three to one. So I'm gonna put a little bit of, of balsamic vinegar, and I'm gonna put about three times that amount into this bowl. You don't wanna do it too much, just one, two, three. Okay, so one little part of balsamic vinegar, three parts of oil, and then a really, really small uh, dash of honey. Just a little scoop. And all that's gonna do is kind of bring the acid from, um, from the balsamic, and it's gonna really balance everything out. Okay, a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, at this point, you can add arugula, uh, sorry, you can add oregano if you want, any kind of herbs and spices you like. I like to keep it simple, salt, pepper, and that's all you need. So we're gonna mix this up. Our frittata's got about four minutes. Now this is ready, we'll have this aside. And um, the goat cheese, we're just gonna sprinkle on top after. Okay, so we are all set. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth. The buzzer rang. Let's see how we're doing. So I always like to use a rag to get my uh, pans out of the oven. Remember, that's a hot handle. If you have oven mitts, great. I just like to use a bag. Okay, so we're gonna have a look here. We're gonna put them up. Now what we, well, first of all, this looks beautiful. Okay, so what we wanna make sure is when we shake it, it's the egg mixture isn't moving. It's nice and firm. Then we know, okay, perfect. This is this is perfectly cooked. Okay, so, and another reminder, keep this rag or your oven mitt, keep it on the handle. So anyone walking by, any of my little girls coming by, when they see this, they know, okay, this is a hot pan, okay? So now the fun part comes, is the plating. So all we're gonna do, we're not even gonna use a knife, we're just gonna use a little flat spatula, and we're just gonna cut right down the middle. We're gonna make maybe six pieces, almost like a pizza. Okay, and now we can um, we can be professional chefs and we'll do a fancy plating, okay? So we'll get our pan, our, our plate here. We'll get one square, kind of keep it to the side. We'll get another square, and we'll just kind of overlap it, just kind of sticking out like that, okay? Tuck everything in nicely. So you got kind of everything off to one side, okay? Then we're gonna take our salad. And we're just gonna pile it as high as we can. Just right, right to the side, kind of pile it on. And then we'll take our goat cheese. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna sprinkle it right on top. If a little bit goes on top of the frittata, even better. Goat cheese and frittata is amazing. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit on here. Okay, perfect. And I always like to finish uh, my dishes off with just a little bit of olive oil, just on top, give it a little spin. And maybe as a nice finishing touch, we could just do a little bit, just a touch of it. Just Okay guys, and there you have it. A beautiful frittata, a little arugula salad with, with uh, goat cheese. The family will love it. Your fridge will be nice and empty. All your leftover half zucchinis, half onions, put them all in a frittata. It takes 15 minutes. We did it all here from, from beginning to end. Half an hour tops and you have a wonderful, wonderful lunch, breakfast or dinner. Okay, hopefully I can see you guys again and we'll make some more videos. Bye now.